Hello everyone, you're welcome to this topical series prepared for every good work, 2 Timothy 2, 21. I am Derek Mudeda. I'm Edrin Mwenda. And uh, it's going to be a four-part series uh, uh, prepared for every good work. What does it mean to you? Yes, uh, prepared for every good work. What comes to my mind when I see or hear the word prepared? Yes, uh, first of all, something that's prepared is something that has been made ready for use. Something that has undergone a process of preparation. So for you, for you to be prepared, yes. what is behind the word is actually a process. Mm. Someone has gone through a process of preparation and he's now ready to be used. Yes? Yes. And in all fields of life, in academics for example, the success for us to be successful in academics is uh, dependent on how much we are prepared. Okay. Yes, and then talk about what uh, ac- academics, ag- agriculture, all fields of life, sports. The political, sports world, the success of that is dependent mm. mostly on um, preparation. The preparation. Wow. How prepared is that person? Okay. That's why every time someone will fail, the excuse they will give is mm. maybe I wasn't prepared enough. Okay. Yes. So even in the things of God, for us to be able to be used mm. by God, we have to be prepared. God does not use anyone. God does not use anything. God uses that that has been prepared. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, 2 Timothy 2, 19 to 21. Nevertheless, this firm foundation of God stands. Having this seal, the Lord knows those who are his. And everyone who names the name of the Lord is to abstain from wickedness. Now, in a large house, there are not only gold and silver vessels, but also vessels of wood and of earthware, and some of honor and some to dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from these things, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified, useful to the master, prepared for every good work. Well, he says in a great house or in a large house. Yes. Yeah, that simply means in the church of God. Yeah, the great house here is the church of God. Oh. When it says uh, the master, mm. to be fit for the master's use, the reference there is Jesus Christ. Okay. We get that from Hebrews 3 verse 6. But Christ has a son over his own house, whose house we are if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope mm. firm to the end. Yes. So uh, Christ is in charge of the house. He's the master. Okay. Yes. And uh, yes. And then the vessels? The vessels mm. are the ministers of God. Okay. Yes. So he says in a great house, that is the church of God, mm-hmm. there are not only vessels of gold and silver, mm. but also of wood and clay. Yes. And some for honor, some for dishonor. Yes. So um, the large house is the church of God. The Master is Jesus Christ, and then the vessels are the ministers, the people who are doing a service in mm-hmm. the Church of God. So if we can focus a little bit on the vessels, the vessels, yeah? yes. the vessels have attributes. Okay. Yeah. The vessels have attributes, and the first attribute, for example, uh, a vessel cannot fill itself. Mm. Yes, it has no power to fill itself. I understand. Whoever has made the vessel mm. will use it for whatever they will fill it. Okay? So, even to us, because this relates to the ministers we're talking about, or the, the servants of God, yeah. God is the maker of the vessel. Mm. So, God fills the vessel. Mm. God puts into the vessel what He wants. What He wants. He says in James chapter 1, verse 17, every good and perfect gift comes, comes from, from the Lord. And then in 2 mm. Corinthians 4, 7, he says that the excellences may be of God. He says we are earthen vessels, mm-hmm. but we have a treasure in us. That the excellences may not be of us, but of God. Of God yes. yes, so God fills the vessel. Mm. The vessel can't fill itself. That's very key. And something else about the vessel is a, a vessel. What makes the vessel special is what it contains. Mm-hmm. Uh, if one vessel is containing mud or soil, and another vessel is containing, let's say, juice, water, wine, uh, that's what defines the vessel. So what makes it the vessel special is the thing it contains. Mm. And the same applies on God's side. Uh, you, we see him talking about Paul in Acts 9, 15, saying, I have chosen 
He's a chosen vessel. He's a chosen vessel uh, to declare, the knowledge, to declare the knowledge of Christ to the Gentiles. Mm-hmm. So he had, he was a vessel already chosen by God. For what was in him was the difference. It's what made him special to God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's a, as valuable as what it contained. As valuable as what it contained. Uh, just like the scripture we have already talked about, Second Corinthians four seven, we are ten vessels. Are ten vessels. All we contain is a treasure. So that's what makes us special. Special. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then yes, the other attribute number three. A vessel has a purpose. Every vessel has a purpose. Mm-hmm. There is no vessel that has been made without the purpose. Yes. So every vessel has a purpose. Some are for pouring out, some are for display. display. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so uh, in relation to what we're talking about, we are vessels of God called to display. Okay. He says in First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that we are chosen generation, mm-hmm. that we may declare His praises. His praises. Yeah. So we're supposed to display, we're supposed mm-hmm. to express what God has put inside of us. That's true. So a vessel is one that is for display, for show. Okay. Yeah, for pouring out. Yeah, and the a vessel vessels are generally liable to wear and tear. Mm-hmm. They they wear out what, at what, some point. They wear out. Okay. Mm. And the uh, putting this into context, we look at Elijah in this aspect. Okay. Elijah in the First Kings 19:18, he began complaining to God, "I'm tired of this. I I am the only one left." He, like he, his time, was, he felt he could no longer move on. Mm-hmm. So we have to be with that fact at the back of our mind that we can get worn out or tired. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so that calls us. When you say it wears out, it simply means. Firstly, because in First Kings uh, 19, 18, mm. God uh, told him, because he was complaining that he was the only one, yes. and God said, I have 7,000 reserved. Mm. So it simply means that uh, we are replaceable. Yes. A vessel can serve its purpose and then be replaced. Yeah. So that calls us to walk in humility. Yes. Because and we can burn out, we can wear out, God can replace us. Yes. And there are many others, there's a reserve. Yeah. yeah? And then we are just clay. That's how we should view ourselves. Mm. God is the potter, mm. and we are just clay in His hands. Mm. So uh, to conclude on these attributes, special vessels yes. are taken care of well. Mm. If you have a nice vessel, a very unique uh, utensil or whatever in your house, yes, the care you give it, the value you give it mm. for special sal- sal- purposes, serving visitors, for that kind of, you know, it's a yeah. special. So, because we are special vessels, God takes care of that mm. more or well. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you are talking about us or being special vessels. Does this apply to all people, or it's for some people? There are some people who are special and others are not. Well, uh, let's take it from Ephesians two and verse ten. It says, uh, for we are his workmanship, uh, created in Christ Jesus yes. unto good works, mm. which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in walk them. In them. Mm. Yes. So everyone, everyone, every Christian is the workmanship of God. We, God has made us. Mm-hmm. And then in Christ Jesus, we have been, pre- we have been, there are works that God has laid down for us mm. that we should walk in them. He says, "We are, for you are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, and to good, good works, works. That means to do good works. Mm-hmm. So yes, everyone, mm-hmm. yes, everyone has a purpose. Everyone has been prepared for works. Mm-hmm. But uh, just like we have read in Second Timothy, in a large house, yes, not only vessels of gold and silver, but we also find vessels, vessels of, of wood, wood and clay." And clay. Mm-hmm. And say some for honor and some for this one. Uh-huh. So yes, everyone has been prepared. Everyone has been called for special purposes. Yes. But not everyone is a vessel of honor. Not everyone is a vessel of gold and silver. Yes. Uh-huh. Vessels of wood are those that have that bring this honor. Uh-huh. They don't honor God. Yes. Vessels of wood and clay also are not refined. They're not cultivated. Uh-huh. Whereas a vessel of Honor, a vessel of gold and silver, has separated itself, mm. has sanctified itself, 
and so it's ready for use okay mm. so yes uh, jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 he says before i formed you okay so that was said to jeremiah but it applies to us as as now or of mm. now mm. it applies to us he mm. says before i formed you i knew you, you. Mm. so god knows us and he says i separated you mm. i sanctified you and called you the prophet unto nations mm. yes. so before but god knows us mm. and god prepares god prepares the works god has made the works already yes. so he sanctifies us prepares us for us to be able to carry out the works of god okay that's uh, you make a, a very important point and uh, uh these vessels will need to go through a process like you said some are, are not unrefined mm. uh, is it possible to be separated and then you remain in your own ways like you are separated from sure. birth and then you are not walking in what is <laughs> very, very possible mm -hmm. we see that uh, in the bible galatians chapter 1 in verse 14 mm -hmm. yes verse 14 and 15 paul was separated from the mother's womb in mm. verse 15 mm. before he was born he was separated okay he says but the grace of god which separated me from my mother's womb but in verse 14 paul gives an account that he was the paul most zealous. zealous paul was the the most energetic mm. in destroying the church of god yes he says among my contemporaries mm. as others were just barking and shouting paul could go for a life Mm. Paul was most zealous about destroying the church. Yet, in verse 15, from the mother's womb, he had already been separated. separated. I guess. So it's very possible. It's very possible. Yeah. But uh, even in that, we have to go through a process. Mm -hmm. Even when God has separated us, mm. even when God has wax mm. waiting for us to walk in, we have to go through a process of separation. Okay. A process of preparation. Preparation. Mm. Yes. And so that is the need we need to talk about now. Mm. There's a need for us to go through, for us to be ready, for us to be, to carry out God's purposes. Mm. We have to go through a process. I guess, yeah. Preparation. So this process, the process of preparation, not any different from what you said to, uh, in, in the beginning. There is a need for preparation in any field. Uh, I will take uh, sports as an example. Those guys who run athletics, the guys who go uh, for gold and we look at them winning like joshua chapter gay for example they take a lot of time preparing back in the hills they run up and down and the uh, months trying to break a certain time limit so by the time they come on the track you just see somebody splinting, uh, splinting like he, he like it's something he does easily yet there is a lot of background work he has done sure and that's not just in sports every field academics and everywhere yeah. there's a lot of work that happens in the background yeah. and so it's not any different for somebody to turn out as a special vessel he has to go through a process of preparation yeah like we can see in zachariah 13 9. so zachariah 13 9 it says i'll bring the one third through the fire yes we refine them as silver is refined mm -hmm. and test them as gold is tested. Yes. They will call on my name and I will answer them. Mm -hmm. I will say, this is my people. And each one will say, the Lord is my God. And Psalm 66. And 10, Psalm 66, 12. 10. Mm. And 10 says, For thou, O God, has proved us. You have tried us as silver is tried. Yes. You have brought us into the net. Mm. You have laid affliction upon our backs. Mm -hmm. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. Mm. We went through fire mm. and through water, mm. but thou hast brought us to a place of abundance. To a place of abundance. Uh, we see God speaking to, uh, to the people in Zachariah that they will, he will test them through affliction. He will, he will refine them like the way he refines what? Silver and, silver and gold through fire, through a furnace. And the, the psalmist in 66 is just acknowledging and he's saying, God, you have taken us through fire. You have taken us through water, yeah, through affliction. But at the end of the day, you bring you, he brings them to a place of abundance. 
he would have just taken them to a place of abundance without them going through that but, but they, they for had them to, go to yes for them to be good vessels them to be brought to the place of abundance yes they had to be refined 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 well <laughs> through the fire through, <laughs> through water yes wow. uh, Hib- hebrews 12:1 <laughs> hebrews 12:1 yeah. it says therefore we also since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses yes let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us he says let us lay aside every weight every weight and sin and sin everything that is extra baggage any things that you have on you if you are to run the race and win he's saying is uh, the right of hebrews is telling us to lay aside put off for us to be able to run to be able to run, to run just run. like the example of sports we gave in the mm. in preparing you the kind of clothes you put on if you are to run and win your race very well you can yeah. go with a gomesi you you can't go with a gomesi on a track mm. or swimming you uh, you dive into the pool and you are on a suit and a necktie mm. you 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 cannot manage to reach your goal so that's the essence of preparation you lay off sin every, anything that pulls you back you put it aside and that's the only way you can be able to reach the goal you've been set for okay mm. thank you so much for that eric there is indeed need for us to go through a process yes. of preparation and uh, yeah it's from the scriptures we have seen mm. the process is not always uh, a laughing one it's not an easy one yeah every every process of preparation mm. is always not a, 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 you know but the fruits he says that he may bring us to abundance yeah the fruits are always good for us to be able to serve god mm. that is the most uh, important thing here yeah. now yes so yes uh, as we close there is a purpose you know mm. god has made the good works and then god has the purpose you know mm-hmm. the vessels we said in our first introduction that every vessel has a purpose yes yes so there is a purpose towards for every vessel mm. there is a purpose it's supposed to fulfill mm. yeah and we are born to actually carry out purposes That's purpose mm. and the vessel derek cannot give itself purpose it can't yeah the mm. purpose is found in the person was made person was made yeah so our purposes are found in god mm-hmm. so that we can walk in, in in his will in what he has prepared for us yes he says we are his workmanship ephesians 2:10 yes that means handiwork mm. god has specifically designed us for us to be able to carry out his work yes he says we are his workmanship created Created in christ Christ jesus Jesus. that means good works god has prepared us specifically you have your role i have my role i have my rest or work that i have i'm supposed to run Mm. into yeah but then we've said there's a need to go through the process so god has called us god has prepared us he said i've sanctified them from their mother's womb but we need to go through a process for us to be able to do the work that Mm. god has prepared for us now in case you're watching us and you're christian maybe you're in doubt you're like can god use me at their speed he says if anyone you know yes it's more of an open invitation mm. if anyone so that means even that one who thinks they are not they cannot be used by special purposes mm. god can he says if anyone that person himself, can anyone. actually cross over mm. to become a vessel of honor so anyone mm. can become a vessel of honor to god mm. anyone can carry out special purposes for yes. god and then in case you're watching us and maybe like paul he says he was the most excellent the man who was zealous about destroying the church yes yet god had actually separated him you could be like that that god has separated you from your mother's womb mm. but instead you're seeking to uh, maybe ridicule the church you're seeking to destroy in many ways you're doing but this today could be your day yes because when paul met uh, uh, jesus mm. on his way to damascus, damascus. that was a turnover. a turnover paul's life has changed yes yeah so a man who was separated from them from his mother's womb was destroying the church mm. yet god had a plan and purpose for him so in case you're that uh, that point that kind of person we would like to pray with you and so you can say these words after me say dear god I thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ to die for me on the cross. My sins are forgiven. 
I confess the Lord Jesus and I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. And today I declare that I am saved. That is the most important decision you can ever make in life. And so uh, after someone is saved, yeah. there are things you're supposed to do. You're supposed to, now that you have a relationship with God, now you can talk, relate with him as your father, you can pray to him, mm-hmm. and then you need to read your word so you can grow, and then find a Bible-believing church mm-hmm. so you can fellowship. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you uh, very much, everyone, for watching us. This was our first episode of Prepared for Every Good Work. Catch you on the next one. Bye-bye. God bless you. God bless you.